Welcome back to the Jam Room Podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Ilya. We are here in beautiful Columbia, South Carolina, here at the beautiful. Jam Room Recording Studio. Uh, we got Natalie Lazare with us. Natalie, thanks for being here. Hello, thanks for doing? having me. Good. Good. Uh, would you like to uh, kind of give people an overview of what you do, your career, that kind of thing? Sure. It's it's a mixed bag, but uh, during the day, Monday through Friday, primarily, I'm a voiceover actor. So okay. anywhere you hear a voice, it could be video games, commercials, product videos, like Amazon. When you look at a product and there's a description video, that could be me. Wow. Or if you're on hold wow. at your doctor's office, I'm the voice on the voicemail. Um, so that's primarily what I do. And then I'm also a singer, so I sing most weekends. Um, yeah, nice. that'd be nice. primarily what I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So what led you to voice acting? Like, What's your career in music and voice acting? I know you also were on TV for a while as yep. well. Mm-hmm. So if you would just want to give us like an overview of that whole career path, that'd be great. Okay, I think I, I always wanted to do voiceover. I always wanted to sing. I always wanted to do voiceover um, or acting of some sort. And so I did that, you know, as a kid did theater like a bunch of people they get into the performing arts all of that um voiceover I, it didn't really exist the way i needed it to exist when i wanted to do it so when i was getting to the point of like going to college at like 18 there weren't home studios i mean no one had like home computers <laughs> when i was 18 so um i would i picked up like a couple books and the technology part was so over my head i'm like what's a dot com i don't even know what a dot com is So if you wanted to do voiceover, you had to move to L.A. or New York um, at that time. And I love those cities to visit. To be honest, I'm just not like a I'm not a New York or L.A. girl. It's just not who I am. I'm a suburb girl. Um, So, yeah, I ended up um, going to school for broadcasting, which was very general and and circles that. And uh, my first job out of school was in radio. I was a radio broadcaster and I moved to Iowa. I had never been to Iowa until the day I moved there. I did not know anybody. I just took the one job that would take me. I moved to just a few days after graduating. Um, I worked in a cornfield in the middle of the night. Very scary. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I loved it. It was really fun. It is really hard or was and probably still is to make a living in radio. So I needed to be able to eat and do what I wanted. Um, so I ended up getting into television, which was also part of the mass comm major, um, and did that for many years, how I ended up here in Columbia. I was an anchor here for 10 years during that time. Voiceover came back into my life. So, um, it was actually a mix of music and voiceover that brought it back. Someone I sang with when I was very young said, Hey, I'd love to record some tracks from you. They lived in Baltimore and they said, um, if you buy this equipment, I'll tell you what to buy and you record at home you know, we can record music together. And I was like, oh, okay, awesome. And so I started doing that around the same time at the TV station. Um, I was asking, who is this woman that does these promos? When does she come in? And they're like, oh, that's Susan. She lives in Chicago. And I was like, oh, really? So, oh, you guys are like getting stuff by email now? That that was a new thing at the time. Um, And they're like, yeah. And I was like, I want to do that. That's, That's I cool. want to do that. I want to work in my pajamas from home, but still get mm-hmm. to do this. Um, so it started a 10 year just obsession hobby that turned into a career. So I did it for for years and years on the side while I worked in television until I was at the point where I was like, I'm exhausted. I have two jobs. I'm going to pick one. And mm-hmm. I picked, yeah. I picked the one that I built. I sure. picked voiceover. So yeah. yeah. So I've been doing that now full time for 13 years. That's awesome. Wow. Mm-hmm. Man. Dang, that's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> so uh, I remember I was talking to you uh, recently and you said that like early in the music days, you were like a backing vocalist for like an Elvis impersonator. Yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> so I have a problem of never saying no. And so it's Relatable. it's not a problem. It's awesome. You end up in like the coolest positions. But I don't even know how that happened. When I was 15 or something, I met someone somewhere and they were like, come sing backup for our blues band. And these were adults. They were like in their 40s and 50s. And sure. I was like a kid. And they're like, do you know anyone else that sings that can be another backup singer? And I was like, actually, I do. Um, and the two of us ended up singing with them for years. And through cool. them, met some Elvis impersonator. And we started wow. singing for him. So I know all the backups to every Elvis song. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but it was really, really fun. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's so really what cool. kind of gigs do you play as an Elvis impersonator 
backup singer? Like, what, what were the sh- what were the shows? Right, like? weird. Um, well, the uh, Elvis birthday time is a really happening time. Sure. Uh, birthday anniversary, it's death gotta. anniversary. Um, we did festivals. I feel mm. like it was festivals or stuff related to Elvis. It wasn't like all, it wasn't like every weekend we have an Elvis gig. It sure. was, yeah. <laughs> uh, we get together like, I don't know, once a month and rehearse. And then mm. when festivals came up, we'd do that. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. I imagine there's probably some like nursing home gigs in there. You know, there, there should have been. Yeah. But no, no, I never <laughs> did. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. I was just, I was like, are there people that are hiring privately, like the Elvis impersonator yeah. band? Because I want to meet that right? person. Right? That, that'd what? be a party to go to right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 That'd be a very interesting party. Uh-huh. Very interesting vibe. <laughs> yeah. So how did your experience early on um, as a musician in, you said Maryland? Yeah, Maryland. What, what city in Maryland? Uh, so I grew up in, primarily in Annapolis, Maryland, okay. but I've lived all over Annapolis. So. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Cool. How did the or music Maryland. scene... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How do the music scene of Annapolis compare to your experience like in the Columbia music scene nowadays? I am so sad that we didn't have the opportunities there that we have here. Columbia mm-hmm. is like an amazing animal. It's true. Uh, it is unbelievable um, how many live music venues there are mm-hmm. and that people here can do it for a living. Um, there wasn't much music in Annapolis. And in fact, I went back a couple, I go back every other summer for vacation um, and wanted to see some live music. And I was really disappointed. I couldn't find anything. Um, wow. Yeah, there was not, there was like one, one band maybe playing downtown Annapolis on a Friday, Saturday, hmm. Sunday that I was there. And it's wall to wall people. It's, you know, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super touristy. So I was shocked and yeah, it makes me just appreciate Columbia. Yeah. More. I think yeah. I would have done more with music if there were more opportunities. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If yeah. there were schools, too. I think, like, I asked my parents for lessons, and they were all classical, which is great. Oh, I yeah. think a classical background's great. Sure. But as a kid, it doesn't, like, draw you in. You're, mm-hmm. You want to play the songs that you're hearing on the radio. Definitely. And so I gave up very early on. I was like, oh, well, I guess it's not for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you taking, like, what, what lessons were you taking when you tried classical I think I took guitar um classical guitar and I was like because I asked for I was begging for guitar lessons Mm. and I went to my first one I was like this is not what I thought it was gonna be (laughs) okay um and what else uh singing lessons too and most of it was like operatic there weren't like Hmm. rock band classes and that's really what I wanted to do so sing rock and roll yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. I just yeah yeah, just the and I can see why now it doesn't there's not really like this lively scene there for Mm -hmm. music so why are you training people up there's nowhere for them to go in town so definitely Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. I feel like um there's something that exists in cities where music schools and the local music scene in the city like are very hand in hand yeah Mm -hmm. a lot of overlap in there obviously with like because a lot of music schools will, especially like contemporary mm-hmm. modern music schools, will just hire musicians to teach. Yep. Um, so there's just all kinds of, yeah, like overlap between the teachers at the music schools and yeah. also like who is playing on a Friday night at, you know, X venue. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's super interesting. It's such a great thing because you are, you're raising up the next generation of musicians for your sure. town. So yeah. Yeah. Fair, mm-hmm. yeah. Definitely. So um, how did the uh, your work as like a backup vocalist uh, influence your work in like radio broadcast and then like TV like how did what was the overlap there so I think all of it's I, I, there are basically only a few things I can do I may have like a bigger resume but that's mostly because I'm older um, I've been around a long time and said yes to a lot of stuff but really all I do is I can perform and I can write and I can do stuff on ca- those are my only skills I can't can't really, I can't skills. bake. I can't make you a cake. I can't, yeah. you know, those are like my three things. But they do apply to a lot of different things. So, sure. yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously that translates to like a million different platforms, you know, mm-hmm. if you're yep. good at performing and acting and, you know, being in front of people. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'd imagine you're better than I personally am at like talking to audiences. Like, how is your experience? Sometimes. <laughs> I don't like not being prepared. So okay. yeah, I can get really nervous if I'm not prepared. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. 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 That's the worst part of being a singer is having to talk. Right? <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first started with, um, so I, I performed with my husband and we, when we first started together, he's like, do you want to talk? I'm like, mm well, I'll just watch what you do for a while until That's I'm funny. comfortable with what you do. Then, then I'll come in later. But yeah, yeah uh-huh. we yeah. have to like 
look at each other like who's gonna like say yeah. the thing like the the spiel it's that so we real. give yeah. and he's like do you want to say something and i'm like no. no and he's like okay i'll do it and then yeah. there'll be time i'm like okay i, I can mm-hmm. do it this time i've yeah. worked up the courage yep. now to, yeah. <laughs> yeah to promote ourselves yeah. <laughs> one mistake that we still make after gigging for like a solid two years like mm-hmm. at least a year that's like almost full time mm-hmm. is we always both say thank you and it's like staggered a little bit so it'll be like thank you thank you <laughs> Uh, and we've even joked about like trying to work out some way to harmonize thank you between yes. us like when we say it after songs end you know oh my god that would be amazing um, yeah you just I'm look d- at each other and saying thank you oh stop <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah that'd be ridiculous I'm doing it on purpose at this point it's, yeah. I think it's cute it's <laughs> yeah that's, that's really funny yeah we definitely gotta work that uh, harmony out that'd be, that'd be ridiculous <laughs> oh man okay so uh, what drew you into voice acting like what were the what were the big benefits of that job that like made you want to do it full time I don't know why like I was interested in it as a kid I I don't like I definitely am more interested in the, in that than on camera acting so sure. I, mm. I'll tell you why so yeah I did do on camera acting for a while and and I do love it I don't like getting ready in the morning <laughs> don't like spending an hour on like hair and makeup and that i don't know i I like getting dressed up for gigs it's weird like that's fun for me Mm -hmm. i and maybe that just means i like it more i'm not sure but i just i love the idea of being cozy and still kind of doing what i like yeah there's Mm -hmm. a lot less pressure with not having your face on camera to i don't know sure there are probably a a few reasons i think in tv so i worked in town on on tv for 10 years and that was great i learned a lot of skills um honestly working in television will make you a really versatile person sure just because of the fear of hitting your deadline every day and the stuff you have to do like you're gonna be fired if you don't find three people to interview and get it written and and get your video edited and it's it's so high pressure that any other job you do after that you're like oh this is amazing. Like, sure. <laughs> I have four hours to write something. What? Like, yeah. I don't have 30 seconds. Like, oh, it's oh amazing. Gosh. Yeah. Um, so I learned a lot of skills, but I'll just, yeah, the, I think the pressure and then being on camera and people recognizing you is f- as fun as people think that would be. I think it got to a point, at least locally in town, where just like going to the grocery store just kind of became like a... Like, I don't want to go anymore. Oh, like, yeah. because I, a lot of people are really nice, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people, the first thing they say to women is, God, you look fat on television. I can't. <laughs> and so you you go throughout your day hearing that like six times a day and you're like, okay, I get it. I, like, Dang. yeah. And that's it's brutal. I mean, that's really. Oh, my God. It's, it's kind of hard to it's imagine. every day and it gets kind of hard mind. leaving your house. And I feel God. horrible yeah. for women in media or women. It does not happen yeah. to the men. It does not happen to the men at all, but it happens to the women constantly. And it's like, wow, you guys are just sucking all the joy out of whatever I did today. Whatever story I worked really hard. I think there was one day. Oh, there was one day I worked really hard on a story helping a man that was dying um, and trying to raise money for him. And I remember I got I did this huge special. And this woman called me and I just had a baby, too, by the way. She called up and she's like, I really liked your story. Man, I'm sorry to bother you, but your hair looks terrible. And I just wanted to call and oh tell gosh. you that. And I'm like, really? I've worked all week on this story. Like, I really felt like I was helping another human being. I Like, I just, the fixation with women and their looks is just, oh, my God. It's it, bananas. Yeah. That so good grief. So it's voiceover for me. Yeah. Oh, my that's, gosh. Yeah. That, it really factors in. You still get the that's joy wild. of performance and writing, but yeah, not the scrutiny. Mm. Was yeah. that woman like... Um, was it like somebody she you like knew? No, or? it was always stranger. Yeah, just strangers, just, just strangers, hating? constantly, just like needlessly hating. Yeah, oh yeah, or just they're wow. like, oh my god, you're definitely pregnant, right? And you're like, no, I'm oh not even goodness, close, but thanks. Um, oh my god, that's gosh. bananas. Yeah, uh-huh. I would never have guessed that. Yeah, I would lose my mind. I know yeah. it's so much, and you really like, and then you have to struggle to you as a woman to be like, I am not going to diet. There's nothing wrong with my weight and telling sure. yourself like, I, I do not need to do this. But yeah. you can see why eating disorders, plastic surgery are rampant, like mm. all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I would never have guessed that that's like such a challenge yeah. like, being on camera so much. And it's not with performing. You go sing somewhere and no one says no, anything. But it, for some reason, I don't know what it is about yeah. just being on camera that people are like, the first thing I'm going to say to you something about your appearance and it's going to be something negative it's oh just like it, yeah mm-hmm. that's crazy Isn't that, yeah you're just a person and in, in, that lives in a box yeah yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah you're just a piece of furniture that you can comment on i guess it's, Golly. yeah uh-huh. that's terrible yeah 
I hate that. I know. I know. I wish it wasn't true, but it's true. Yeah. That was, yeah. I w- yeah. I, in a thousand years, I would have never guessed that. Like that's that was like sounds like that the worst part of that job. I would imagine like, it ruined it, it ruined yeah. a lot of it for me because I love yeah. writing. I yeah. love performing. I love well the hours too were a little difficult, but sure. um, but yeah, I'd say that was like the biggest downfall. And anyone in the world can be like, well, you know, you just gotta pull yourself up by your bootstraps oh, and man. not pay attention to it. But come yeah. on. I mean, if you hear that all day, every day, there's no way that it's not just going to sit with you. So right. yeah, that mm-hmm. is brutal. I was just re-listening to part of the Paisley podcast mm-hmm. we did. And something she said is like, like being a woman in like any field, like you want to not think about it, yeah. but there's, you can't like, it's always in your face. She, yeah. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. Um, man, that's, yeah. yeah. We've come a long way and things sure. are better. But um, I do really enjoy no one telling me to smile anymore. I don't get that anymore. But man, I mean, just like being in Target looking at pants. I remember people coming up and be like, smile. It's not so bad. I'm like, I'm looking at pants. Who sits here with a smile plastered on their face looking at pants? Like, yeah. I'd be worried if I walked in and someone was smiling very largely looking at pants. Yeah, that, that's not mm. a person that I would want to no. interact with. Like, honestly, yeah. from no. that would be pretty terrifying to be honest Mm -hmm. maybe we should stop filming the podcast if we're gonna start getting all kinds of (laughs) crazy like comments on our weight and stuff i will like if someone was to come up to me in public and i'm sorry i'm sorry you're inviting something very unpleasant to happen i think i mean and that's the trap of being in tv though someone says something really rude and if you say something rude back yeah you can get fired so you yeah i am my own boss So (laughs) she's like, bring it on. Bring it on. (laughs) Tell me what you want to tell me. Yeah. The first time anyone says anything like that to me, Amelia, podcast is done. (laughs) We're over. We're ending this thing. No, that's that's letting them win. We have to be stronger than that. We will simply (laughs) continue to be a hindrance in your life if we really bother you that much. (laughs) Okay, so you're doing voice acting now. Yeah. Uh, What does a typical day look like for a voice actor? It's really, you know, I, I, people I think expect it to be super exciting. It's it's not. It's it's like working at a, any production studio. So, sure. you, you know, get up at eight and you make coffee and you check your email and you see who needs what for the day. Um, I might have done jobs for someone two days before and they need revisions. So I'll have emails about the revisions that just come throughout the day. But I audition every day as well. So I probably audition for about five jobs a day. And that's just part of my daily life so yeah wow. it's just checking email auditioning editing yeah. and yeah that's it till about five o'clock and then i'm done yeah yeah wow. mm-hmm. so obviously like we're in the jam room recording studio yeah uh so we have a big focus here on like tracking music uh what is the like what's your like like recording rig at your house for okay. like tracking vocals mm. yeah i have um like? rig rundown okay yeah, so <laughs> i i love this my favorite part is my booth so yes. i used to have to wait if there was like a lawn crew or something to work and now i can just step into my soundproof booth and i'm good nice um uh, but i have one that was it's specifically made for voiceover it's called an la vocal booth and it gets shipped from los angeles cool um and you custom build it for your room so i have that and then um my mic is a neumann and cool. that runs into a preamp. It's a, a universal solo 610 preamp. Um, and then my interface is an Audion ID14. Um, okay. Yeah. And that's and, and just stuff. a regular laptop. I actually use a laptop outside the booth um, because it's easy. I have a backup. If mm-hmm. that computer were to die, I can slip in the backup. Oh, so cool. I always have a backup of every piece of equipment. If something's to die, I can just easily swap it and go on with the day cool mm-hmm. so um you, you say you have the mic you have the preamp mm-hmm. interface obviously how much uh post-processing do you have to do for voiceover yeah. before you ship it oh. off to wherever there are so many like specific people that work in this like industry so there's actually an engineer that will remotely get in your computer and give you presets for your own voice wow so he like set me up years ago with my own presets and so that is i just push a button if you want effects on my voice i'll just push a button and they're custom made for me wow yeah that's awesome Uh yeah that's crazy yeah man that's Mm -hmm. really cool i would not have guessed that yeah that's super interesting Mm -hmm. so uh how much of voice acting is like having to deal with the recording technology and recording techniques and like all that stuff like how much of the job is the recording side of it so yeah performance is definitely the smaller end of it i spend a lot more time doing other stuff and editing than i do the voice performance um yeah i'm trying to think of an example like uh 
there's one client that I have. I have a few regulars that I'll do the same stuff for them every week. But they at the end of each spot, there's a different phone number for different cities. And they mm. had 82 different phone numbers. So I record all 82 phone numbers. I just say the 800 numbers in a row. And then I sit there and I edit each one oh, down no. like and label each one. Yeah, so I can sit there for hours and just label and oh. edit down. But yeah. <laughs> Grief. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Man. So we actually, uh, we wrote a little bit of jam room copy. Okay. Um, I know that, well, here, here, let me ask this question okay. first. So I know a big part of voice acting is uh, reading things in certain emotions, uh-huh. right? Mm. Um, so I would love to hear you read the tiny little three line okay. jam room copy in like five emotions. So like okay. whatever some like main popular emotions are in voice acting. Like I would love for you to like say what the emotion is and then okay. read the line. Okay. So we can kind of get some examples. Okay. Um... This takes me back to classes, but uh, one would be like, I would think for here, um, because it's cool and it's hip, is to kind of read like, you're too cool to be here. Okay. So, sure. um, Jam Room Recording Studio. Track your favorite songs with the best producers and the coolest vintage analog equipment money can buy. That's awesome. Just like, Whoa. cool. <laughs> Man, yeah. It's crazy you can just like flip that switch on and like... Wow. Uh, it's weird to watch you like, like I saw the, the set, you know, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, she's a different person yeah. now. She's <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Um, or you can be wrapped in a blanket and warmth. Like um, I'm doing a grocery store spot. Actually, totally random. I got a call like, can you make it to the jam room tomorrow for an emergency commercial that we just lost the person? I'm like, weird, I'm going to be here. Yeah, so crazy. I'm doing it at one o'clock in the other room oh, wow. here cool. today. But yeah. um, that one's going to be like a little more like happy, like um, cozy, kind of cozy. So jam room recording studio, track your favorite songs with the best producers and the coolest vintage analog equipment money can buy. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Cool. What about what about something more like negative, like like kind of suspenseful oh, and dark? So you sound disgusted. So political ads? Sure. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Um, jam room recording studio. Track your favorite songs with the best producers and the coolest vintage analog equipment money can buy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that, Have that you did done feel any political? Negative. I don't I, like. <laughs> I don't like to do political. So I don't, I don't like I don't negative. Like I'll do positive ads, mm-hmm. but I don't like to do the negative ads. That mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Dang. Depends. There are some crazy ones. You look at the copy. You're like, what? Yeah. Like so and so. Like he hates babies. His own family hates him. And you're like, what? Are you putting this on the air? Oh my like, gosh. Yes. But yeah. yeah. Dang. That's um, crazy. Are there? Do we do we miss any? Are there any other um, big kind of like moods that you regularly read in? Um. Let's see. Jam Room Recording Studio. Track your favorite songs with the best producers and the coolest vintage analog equipment money can buy. There we go. What would, wow. well, how would you describe that? Um, upbeat, younger. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can just hear the like jingle behind that, like the sort of like sync <laughs> music, you know? <laughs> That's funny. Dang. That's so cool. Um, okay. That's really, yeah. Again, like watching you, like your whole body language changes <laughs> for like every person that you do. That's really cool. That's why. Oh, oh, I gosh. like that you guys appreciate that. I feel like nobody really appreciates it's, voiceover. It's kind of fun. So that's I've cool. seen, yeah. I get a lot of voiceover content on like my Instagram reels and stuff. Like yeah. there's that mm-hmm. one bald guy that like, would, would like he always takes like the scripts from like trending memes or whatever. Okay. And just like read them in the most like serious, like high five voice ever. And it's just yeah. ridiculous. I love so that. I, I get a little bit of that content on my feed. So I have a little appreciation. I like um, people that I can't do it, but the uh, imitators that can completely um, do someone else's like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a good one. There's this Joe Gaudet I've worked with. I used to do video games with him and he can, they're like parrots. They can just completely do your voice. Like, it's the wow. coolest skill ever. You're like, wow, how did you do that? That's really cool. That's cool. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they start mimicking you and saying mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They know your breathing <laughs> patterns, your pauses. <laughs> like, you're, yeah, it's really, really cool. Because there's a whole uh, movie promos when you see them for like big movies coming out. Those usually aren't the actors' voices that you're hearing. They'll get voice, they're called voice match people. And they'll have them sound like Scarlett Johansson and they'll throw that voice into the trailer. So you're not hearing ScarJo's voice. You're hearing a line that doesn't exist in the movie that a voice actor Whoa. is doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. And that's, it could be from their home in South Carolina. It could be, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's crazy. Yeah. That, is, that is really crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh my I would, gosh. I would never guess that. Yeah. So what's <laughs> like the perfect voice acting gig for you? And then what's like 
one that you like you just hate doing like what are, what's like the ideal kind of gig and what's okay. like the worst kind of gig i don't there's nothing i hate like i really love what i do That's like cool. like even the monotony of certain days i like changing my printer ink i'm just so grateful to be doing nice. this hey. um respect that but i like i one problem is i love I loved, let's put it past tense, doing video games. Hmm. They were really, really fun. That was something I didn't think I would do and I started doing it. Uh, the pay for that is so minimal. I can see that. And they'll put it all in really, a lot of people will put it in really big sessions that screw up your voice. So, oh, man. So if you like yeah. have to do 20, I got punched in the stomach screens, 20, like different, you're screaming for, they try to pack it all in a few hours. Then mm. you can't talk for a couple days and you lose yeah. income for a couple days. Um, but they pay, you get no money when the game comes out. Um, mm. I've done huge games. And if you found out how much I got paid for them, you'd be like, why did you do that? And What's it, like the biggest game you've done? Um, done a, uh, Blair Witch Project a few wow. years ago. Wow. Um, cool. I did um, Fear Effect, like the uh, remakes of those games. Cool. Um, oh, My Friendly Neighborhood was really fun. Oh, uh, nice. That one was good. They actually, they pay well and it's nice. shorter <laughs> roles. But um, My Friendly Neighborhood was really fun. It was like a, a crazed Muppet um, attacking you horror game, kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's, but with Muppets. Hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not doing them anymore because it just financially isn't worth it. Yeah. And I already have some on my resume. So I guess you do them because they look shiny and good on your resume, but sure. they need to pay actors more for that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason that people should, this is a billion dollar industry and yeah. actors mm -hmm. are getting 200 bucks for being a lead character. No kidding. So I, That's crazy. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really hard to believe. Yeah. Did the writer strike affect you at all? Like, not me. I okay. was, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Curious. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Did that affect like many voice actors or? No one that I know. No, yeah, mm. not so much. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Did, uh, so what's your like dream vocal, uh, like vocal acting gig, voice acting gig? Hmm. What's like the perfect voice acting gig? I, I really just love, that sounds weird. I love just like 30 second commercials. So, um, I don't know if there's any specific brand. Um, I got to do a radio ad for Coke, and that was super cool. I was like, oh, my God, I'm doing the Coke commercial. That is cool. That's um, awesome. I guess I, I've done one Super Bowl ad, but oh, really? I would I'd like Whoa. to do more Super Whoa. Bowl ads. Who's it for? I did a ba it was a bank um, hmm. a few years ago, but yeah. That's would, awesome. Would, that's that's really always cool. big. Like, all the voice actors in the community are, like, looking for who got the ads during the Super Bowl. There have been that's less cool. and less voiceover, I've seen, though, in commercials. It's mm, more celebrities, and um, yeah, so it's kind of changing a bit, but yeah. Yeah, I know there's that Duncan commercial this year where they just – piled on like as many boston related celebrities as they possibly yes. could yeah. <laughs> um man that's super interesting how much of like how much of a challenge in voice acting is like the technique aspect of it and getting your voice to like sound a certain way huge and come across a certain way? the biggest thing is not um like you can give yourself internal cues like being wrapped in a blanket or being disgusted um it's really important to give yourself visuals i find this in singing too um it's really important to connect to what you're doing. So uh, say there's a line, this was like a class that I took that was really helpful. Say there's a line in a commercial that says like, um, it's the sexiest place on the planet. You can say, hey, it's the sexiest place on the planet. Or now you can picture Brad Pitt when you say sexiest. It's the sexiest place on the planet. It sure. changes the way you yeah. say it when you have a visual in your head. Um, so with singing, I find that too. I have like entire music videos going through my head wow. mm -hmm. when I'm singing songs. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I get like that. Yeah. People or emotion, like the way I felt when I broke up with someone or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, yeah. 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 Do, do you think the uh, voice acting experience helps you like perform in a more interesting, engaging way at gigs? I wish I could say yes, but I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I, sure. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it all ties together somehow, but yeah. not in a way that I'm like cognizant of. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I, like I know that you and Jeff also, uh, they have a duo called Riverstone. They're really Ooh. amazing. Go check them out. What's the Instagram? Is it Thanks. Riverstone duo is the Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check them out there. Um, but I know you guys also play a lot of those three hour cover sets mm -hmm. and it, it can be really tough to put a lot of yourself and your being in motion yep. into all of the covers you play for three straight hours. Yeah, you do zone out at certain points. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah it yeah. happens. Like yeah. I, I posted that reel where you were briefly just like trailing I off did. singing while Oh singing. my God, I love yeah. hearing that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. He I, did. You, you caught me just completely wandering. Yeah, yeah just watching TV while singing. Like. I just... I just 
I don't know. <laughs> Do you ever just like have a conversation with yourself in your head yes. while you're like singing a song you've sang a million times? Yes. And that's kind of where I was in that moment. Yep. And we caught it right on camera. Yep. And <laughs> he captioned it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I had a moment the other day where I stopped. I, I always sing at the top with harmony on a song that we do together. And I was just looking at Jeff and he's like, what are you doing? Like, just was looking at me and I'm just staring at him. And I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be singing. And so, so I started singing. He's like, what? What were you doing? And I was like, it sounded really good. And I was just enjoying, just enjoying listening it, yeah. to you. That's so funny. I, that's the thing about playing music yeah. with your partner. Yeah. Sometimes you're just like, wow, you're like doing what really you're doing job. really well. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. it's really good. It's real. Yeah. Like they hit something really well on guitar. Like so, And you're just uh, like, wow, yeah. you're really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, that definitely happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Yeah. It's also just, it's wild to think about like, I mean, like you and I have been both performing for like a long time, mm-hmm. but even like the like our very first ever gig was uh, a Steel Hands, thanks to some really good friends of ours that kind of got us connected. Mm-hmm. Um, but like for that gig, I was like, I feel like both of us were like <laughs> ball of nerves, yes. you know. And then it's so funny to think like even just two years later, we're like, what's going on with the soccer game up there? <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy how that happens. It, it's also just kind of funny, like to remember that like a lot of people get very nervous to perform music Mm -hmm. and you kind of forget that when you do it so much Mm -hmm. and you just get like completely i I don't know what the right word is for but like i guess burned out on being stressed out or like like you just can't Mm -hmm. get nervous for every single performance anymore right yeah um it's kind of funny just how how much that kind of is graded out of people over time yeah i'll say jeff keeps me on my toes a little bit because he's been playing music like full time for like 20 years sure so he yeah he has absolutely no emotion over <laughs> playing it like he's not like fearful at all anymore but we don't really rehearse he'll bring up a song and be like hey you want to try this we'll sit down on the sofa I'm not kidding for 20 seconds 30 se-. he's like great we have it I'm like well I don't and sure. he's like well we'll just do it live tonight and you know we'll just swear. I'm like no, you know, yeah I don't like that but he can I feel pick it up very quickly and do it and for me it's a lot scarier so that sure. gets thrown in on a regular basis so i do get frightened for one song a set like yeah once yeah. a month sure. and like well, that's healthy yeah you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's a healthy balance there mm-hmm. i think right do you find too sometimes i'll hear things come out and i'm like how is that coming out like how do i know the harmony to that yes. like i'll have moments <laughs> where i'm like that's am i gonna know that how do i know this mm-hmm. like, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. melody will just like snap into place and yeah it's like, okay like, i guess yeah. i picked that up it's at weird. some point mm-hmm. but yeah no and i yeah. think being the vocalist too like I don't know. It's just a different learning process. Like Sam can, you've told me a million times, you can sit down, you learn songs better when you sit down and like type without out the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Without a guitar. Oh, which is kind of. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So when I, you know, learn songs for a gig, uh, I've, I've realized that I, I, I think I have some like, this is very like, you know, what's armchair <laughs> personal psychologist here. But like, I think I have some like ADD or ADHD or something because when I sit down to learn a song with a guitar, like trying to chart it out and figure out what the chords are and stuff, I'll just like immediately like five seconds in my brain just wanders. I start like noodling. I'm like, oh, what you know? Uh, so I I don't know. I I've had to literally like force myself to like put headphones on and then like type out the chords I hear wow. while the song is going. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it yeah it you know helps yeah. to know the number system well for me musicians yeah, trying to learn cool. that. Yeah. but but as a singer you gotta sit there and like look at the word like you can't just listen to it and then like okay I got it like yeah. I feel like I have to sit down mm-hmm. with like a track with the vocals on yeah. it look at the words yep. and then i have to do like a karaoke track again looking at the yeah. and it's i don't know there's so many steps yeah <laughs> there are and i feel like ours are like we do super harmony heavy and we rarely do it in the original key mm. Mm. so if it's a totally different key and it's not something i can pull up on youtube i'm like well let's just hope that works out tonight let's yeah. hope sure. let's hope it goes where it's supposed to go but yeah yeah so far yeah so far so good it's been and i actually did notice if i start zoning out on a song i used to like really like we actually swap it for something new now I, if I'm oh, like wow. I, I go if I'm not connecting to this anymore I will in a few months let's swap it out and sure. then we'll yeah. come back and do it again and yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we've finally been doing that where we've had like one set that we've been playing for probably like a year and a half mm-hmm. yeah and we've just started to really like I don't know we're, we're yeah. like grinding out a lot of new songs yeah. it is a set of like um, 150 or 200 songs oh my God. sure <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's a lot of tunes on there yeah. when you're playing like I don't know, six, mm. three hour gigs, three or four hour gigs a week. A like you, yeah. you play those 150 yeah. songs a yep. lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we're like, I I personally think we've started to circle back to some older ones. And I'm like, yeah. I like this uh, again. Yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. It sparks again. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was, I mean, for the first like year of our gigging, like it was like best part, Daniel Caesar, 
every single gig, 100 percent time. We like never do and Daniel Caesar anymore. Stop doing it. Yeah, <laughs> which like it's a great song, but you just play it so many times. You're yeah, like, yeah. We used yeah. to do like five songs by Daniel Caesar, and now we're just like we don't, yeah. we don't yeah. play any of them anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We also like I think we kind of realize that people just like hearing like the more upbeat stuff. Like they do. Because most times it's when you get when you get hired yeah, to play music, yeah, like yeah. you know Friday night at a brewery. I get it. Like they, I don't know. People want people like having a good time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we used to like kind of joke about doing like some really sad like songs. We did in the start and, of our career. Yeah. And, and then we just kind of realized like people like <laughs> they're the most depressing band ever. Yeah. 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 Like like uh, well, I feel like there was some Bruno Mars songs. What was that one? Was like, we used to do flow. When I Was Your Man. Yeah, there we go. Oh, great song. Um, it's a great yeah. song. It's very sad. Yeah. I made someone sad. cry at a bar once with that song, and I was like, yes, yeah. but not everyone yeah. wants to cry at the bar. Right. It's yeah. fine. Wow. I wish they did. <sighs> yeah. yeah. We always gravitate towards like the heavier songs, because you connect yeah. emotionally. It's true. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've struggled to add upbeat songs. It's, uh, it's a struggle. Yeah. I feel yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It's tough. It feels like so corny and so like... Yeah. yeah, doing hollow notes again. <laughs> it's also. I just think it's also interesting how, like, when you're doing music the way I feel like all of us are doing, mm-hmm. you know, duo, brewery, three hour cover gigs. Yeah, like you're pretty much always performing in a space where, yeah, like people are like trying to have a good time and feel good. Yeah, and so there's less. It's like almost just because of what the market is like. There's less of an opportunity to like play this slow, more heartfelt stuff because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're like your job is to like entertain yeah. and like bring the whole atmosphere up. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, so I just find that kind of interesting. Yeah, but that's why weddings can be really fun. Oh, it's true because yeah. they do want to hear those they really do. heartfelt songs oh, at yeah. weddings. A lot of a lot of uh, what is it? A thousand years, Christina Perry. I love, I that. love oh, it. Yeah. It's a great song. I love whenever song. we get to do that song for yeah. someone like walking down the aisle. I'm like, yes, yeah. this yeah. is yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And Canon and D. That's the one I don't super love, but everyone wants Canon and D. So it's yeah, okay. everyone does. You know? mm-hmm. Can't blame them. It's a beautiful song. Um, okay, well, I think we're about out of time here. Um, would you like to ask the, the big final question? Whoa. Oh, yeah. We always like to ask just kind of what your favorite local things are. Mm. Um, Sam and I got coffee this morning. Uh, if you were going to go somewhere for coffee, where would you be going? Ooh, um, <laughs> Starbucks. Uh, just because there isn't like stuff close to me in the Northeast. Um, mm. Mm. No, yeah. down here, um, <sighs> Drip. I guess. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. we that's Um, Actually, I love the coffee at um, Gourmet Shop, too. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. They have great coffee there. I haven't tried mm-hmm. that yet. Mm-hmm. It's just a nice place to be, It too. is. I love it. It's hard to get there. a table. You have to, you know, hover yeah, for a while. But, yeah, on yeah. a nice day, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got it. Oh, I was just gonna. I was just gonna keep going with yeah. the. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just want you guys to sing "Thank You" in harmony at the end. That's okay. We can, we'll figure it out. Okay. We'll, it might work. I'll be thinking about it now in the back of my head. Um. Uh. Oh, where's your favorite place to like go out to dinner? Where I like to kind of split it. Where okay. would you go if it was like a date night, and where Ooh. would you go if you were like going out with friends? Okay. Um. Well, I gotta throw lunch in there because I'm more of a lunch person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really love Spotted Salamander. Mm. I've been there. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, we so have. good. Wait. Oh, the little exactly. house. It looks like yeah, a little okay, house. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I have a funny story about Spotted Set. Anyways, Do you? Yeah. Ooh, I want to hear it. It, it. it would if I told it, it would paint them in a, in a not so great light. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna skip it for now. <laughs> okay, but I'll tell you after. Okay, <laughs> I love I love them for lunch, dinner. Okay, if you want to go someplace sexy dressed up, I like going for a cocktail at Bourbon. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a really cool place. Um, let's see just dinner oh my god i actually have a list printed out at home of all the places to eat like nice. oh so you can just if you're like i don't know where i want to eat i have it like all printed out um so idea. efficient it's a great idea you should do that i have a lot of lists there are a lot of lists in my life yeah it's a lot of they can be so that. helpful yeah. um il Giorgione was a new find i really liked them for italian it mm. was really good we just like sat at the bar and got pizza um nice. I love food. There, there, just there are a lot of places I could pick. Main Street's just happening all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ate at Cantina last night. Love their tacos. Oh yeah, yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. That's our go-to. We go to Cantina yeah. a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to see the list sometime. Okay, if you can yeah. share that with us. Yeah, later. I'll take a screenshot and yeah, send yeah. it to you. And I'm <laughs> constantly adding to it too. I'm like, well, I'm going to a place on Monday. It's a wild game place that's new here. And I was like, that's not on the list. Let me pull my oh, yeah. list out and put <laughs> it yeah. on Google there. Doc, you know? Yeah. The Hollows. Um, I think it's called The Hollows. Okay. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that's new, right? It's like yep. brand new. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've wanted yeah. to try that out. Mm-hmm. So. What about like a place to hang out? It's like a place to sit down, kind of hang out with some friends. Uh, oh, I guess I love Steel Hands. Oh, yeah. I mean, nice. yeah. Um, market. I like sitting outside at Market. Nice. Um, any place outside for me. Hendrix on the rooftop. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Savage Craft. Yeah. Any place I can like sit outside. Yeah. Is okay. key for me. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Columbia Craft roof- Rooftop. 
Underrated. It's oh, a great yeah. rooftop. Oh, yeah. Just check I, it out. Okay, cool. Shout mm-hmm. out Maz. We love yeah. Maz. We love Maz. The man. We're playing there for the first time um, coming up this spring for a beer nice. festival. So, Six. yeah. You're yeah. playing there on like just some random April Friday, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, time, yeah. So. I'm excited for that because, yeah, I'm like, oh, an outdoor spot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're Absolutely. lovely. We can't cool. say enough beautiful things about oh, Columbia cool. Craft. Okay. So. Super yeah. good people, too. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I think we're about at the end. Well, what do you have to promote? Oh, okay. We have, me and Jeff have a single coming out in April. Nice. So next month, it's uh, April 19th that comes out, and we're actually doing a single release party at the venue Fun. on April 18th. So cool. it's just $5 a ticket, and we're actually going to do our first time like fuller band. Wow. So it's not just going to be a duo, and we're going to do half originals for the show and half um, stuff that hasn't been released yet either. So half originals and half covers that are going to be really different spins on covers too. So we're trying to make it a really unique show. Cool. Um, yeah. So venue Friday, April 18th. Um, and we have those dates on our social media too. So if you cool. follow Riverstone Duo on Instagram or Facebook, you can see the date there too. But awesome. Yeah. Very cool. We'll have a video coming out that day for it too. So yeah. Nice. I think you also have some books on Amazon. I do. Well. I do. I have a, if you're interested in voiceover, how to become a voiceover artist is a guide on there. It's just a few bucks uh, or you can get the paperback and that's on um, Amazon. And then I have a psychological thriller called, um, or I'm sorry, um, young adult fantasy called Lucid. And then beneath them is the psychological thriller. Nice. Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Natalie. Thank you. Uh, Thank you to our patrons. Uh, We got Chris Reed, Todd Baker. We appreciate you all for helping us put the podcast on. If you want to be a patron, it's uh, $7 a month, cheaper than a cup of coffee. Um, Thanks to the Jam and Recording Studio for for letting us track here. Um, And for Zach for producing the audio. Um, Awesome place. They have a dedicated mastering room here, which is super cool. Lots of cool vintage analog equipment. Like Natalie mentioned earlier. Thank you, Natalie. Very cool. Uh, Free copy or free voice acting. Um, (laughs) Thank you, Jason, behind the camera. It's JB. I always forget. It's JB Dash Dash Creative Studio on Instagram. Uh, He's a great guy to get uh, video, audio, lighting, graphic design, video, like any kind of work like that. He's the man for it. Mm -hmm. He's great at all of it. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we're Sam and Lily. Check us out online. It's just at Sam and I L L I A. Uh, we play events, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also have a Monday night open jam. Uh, okay, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got it all in there. Yeah. Got everything. Thank you for listening. Uh, catch y'all next time. <laughs>